welcome to another episode of In Pajama. Today we are going to talk about emulators and one such emulator called Vnode. So what are emulators? Emulators are tools that are used to mimic the behavior of the actual device. In semiconductor industry specifically, we use emulators to mimic the behavior of actual SOC before it is sent for production. Now, this emulation can be hardware based using FPGAs or software based using tools like Vnode and Keynote. So how does emulator helps us and why they are so crucial? Emulators enable us to do some early software development and this is very crucial. If you can do early software development that ultimately reduces your time to market. You can just try your software once the silicon is out and in your hands. And this really helps because you can also find bugs in the silicon way ahead of time and this reduces the overall cost. So why we know? I have been using emulators for quite a long and I was majorly using Kimu for all my experiment and recently switched to Vnode. What I like about Vnode is its simplicity. It is so easy to define and expand your design in Vnode. I can tell you that I have used Kimu for way longer than I have used Vnode, but I am more confident working on Vnode than Kimu, all thanks to its brilliant documentation. In this series of videos, we will have a look at Vnode, how we can use it, how you can expand your designs and how can you attach GDB, debug your designs and much more. Hope you liked this series. So let's have a look at Vnode. So Vnode can be accessed by going to the vnode.io website. You can access their docs by clicking the docs link. The docs link gives you a special highlights on how to install the Vnode, how to re, uh, use the Vnode. The Vnode binaries are distributed on their GitHub page. You can go to Vnode GitHub page. And here's the latest binary. If you go at the bottom, you will find different binaries for the Unix operating system, for Debian, for MSI, for the Windows, and the zip. If you want to build directly from their source code that is also visible, the instructions are also on their GitHub page. Additionally, we have pushed a basic template of the STM project that can be used to interact with Vnode on our in pajama site. I'll share the link in the captions below. So let's have a look at the Vnode source code and how the source code is organized. So the Linux source code, the Vnode source code, sorry, is organized in as multiple repositories. One of the repositories is the infrastructure that contains multiple peripherals, multiple core implementations, etc. The folder that we are much more interested in are, is called scripts. So in scripts, the we, you have multiple uh, multiple types of socks already designed for you. There are multi nodes which are like multiple socks interacting with each other. The more interesting one are the single nodes, and that's where we'll start with. So. If you go to the single node, you will find STM32F4 and multiple boards that are already set up for you. And you can directly you can directly run these boards for your demo, or you can create your own board and run your application towards it. So how does Vnode actually creates the board? The Vnode unis uses a hierarchy of scripts to define a platform. For example, the one that we start from is called platforms. So if you go under platforms, you can have a look at the boards and the board that we are going to use for our demos is called stm 32 f 4 discovery kit. As you can see it, it defines, it uses multiple another scripts that define other hardware representation. So if you look at, it uses the stm 32 f 4 discovery representation, let's open that and as we see, it actually uses the CPU definition STM32F4, defines a user button and ties it to GPIO port A0, defines a user LED and ties it to port D12 number pin. As you can see from syntax, it looks quite easy to extend your hardware. But that's for another video. Let's look at what's there in this file. So let's go into platforms. CPUs and then STM32 F4. So this is the place where we define our hardware. As you can see here, we define SMMC Bank 1, which is basically memory mapped 
purpose and its address and its size. Similarly, if we go to UART, we say that we have a user 2, which is basically a STM32 UART definition, which is located from sysbus 400440, and it is connected to NVIC line number 38. Coming to the CPU, you can see here we define CPU and CPU as a Cortex M device with the Cispus interface, and the CPU type is Cortex M4 with NVIC as its interrupt controller. So, this is how you use the basic constructed models in Raynote and collect them, integrate them to form your SOC. Then you take this SOC and integrate other peripherals like user LED and button, like we see in the last file and form a boot. And once you have this, you can use this boot to run your demo applications. So let's look at one of such applications and how we can create such a machine and run our code. So here's the STM32 template that we have created for Renote and you, that you can reuse to use your applications. So Let's first look at what we have over here. So we have multiple folders over here. One is the Renode board, which we will explain in the next video. And the second one is much more interesting, which is the source folder and contains our application. So the source folder contains the census files, which are the Cortex M software interface standard coming from ARM, which basically abstracts some of the basic peripherals of ARM, like NVIC, MPU, the Cystic, etc. The second is our startup.c, which contains our vector table, our reset handler. So what are we doing specifically over here? We are doing a minimal vector table. The minimal vector table that we, for, that we want for our boot is actually just the stack address and the reset handler. And in the reset, we just initialize the dot data section, clear up the BSS and jump to main. And in our main, all we are doing is trying to toggle an LED at a certain interval. The build system that we use for our project is CMake. The CMake is very versatile and I use it quite often, over, quite often over Make. Make has its own problem. It's, I find its syntax very cryptic and I would rather have some tool generate those files for me rather than writing it myself and that's what Make. We have covered into the details of make and build system in our blog, so blog post. I'll share the link in the caption. So what the CMake does for us is it takes all the files that are un that are .c or .s and add them to our target. And we name our target as lab1. And this is where we define that the CMake has to pick our linker script, which is the linker.ld. One thing that you have to do while using this template is to define your path to the GCC. So let's see what happens when we run the CMake. To run the CMake, you can open your terminal and type CMake hyphen B, give it a build directory dot slash build and the path to the source directory, which is the file CMake list dot txt. And let's go dot slash. And what you will see is the CMake identified our compiler, picked it up, and created the build files under the build folder. If we look under the build folder, here's our make file. And this is all generated by CMake. You don't have to write the scriptic syntax anymore. And all now you have to do to build your application is cd.slash build and run make. Sorry. And there's our application, lab1 and lab1.map. This is the file generated by our linker that tells us where the symbols are located. And now let's try to launch Renode. So let's test our Renode installation. To see the version of Renode, just type Renode hyphen hyphen version. And we have the version 1.14 installed on our system. So let's try and launch our Renode. To launch Renode, just type Renode icon item console. Adding the option console is just optional. This just stops Renode from generating one more monitor window and attaches the monitor window directly into your terminal. 
as you can see we have the monitor over here so let's start by creating our machine so to create a dummy machine we first start with map and create so this created a machine for us called machine zero now the venus monitor is like shell it supports auto completing and anytime you want to do it just type what you want to do and press a tab and it will give you options for the commands that you can run so here we want to create a platform to create a platform we'll start with machine load platform description and then we need to give path to the platform that we want to use now when you launch vnode it adds two paths to your environment variables one the path that you use to launch the vnode and the second the vnode installation path so the path the default path can be accessed by typing at the rate and then pulling it up the path so the file that we want to access the script we want to run is under platforms boards and stm32 F4 Okay, now you can start the machine by using the command start. So the machine started, but how do I observe my output? So Reno provides you facility to monitor certain signals that are part of the PSP. When we looked at the representation file, we looked at the discovery kit and we saw that Vnode was specifically connecting port D12 to a symbol called user LED. So what we can do is we can try to monitor that symbol and that will tell us whether the signal is getting modified or not. So to monitor that signal type log level minus one GPR 4D dot user LED. And now you can see See, our LED is toggling. To quit, we know just type QUIT and this will flush your machine and you will back on your console. See, easy peasy. So you can reuse this platform to do multiple experiments with the STM32 discovery kit and maybe modify this platform to experiment and expand your board design. Let me know if you have any doubts. In the next video, we'll look at how can we expand our design and how can we attach a GDB instance to this machine. GDB is a very important when you want to debug our design. And Vnode provides us a facility to export the GDB port that we can use with the VS code and debug our design. So see you in the next video.